Good day folks and welcome to the Anorak Review Show with I, your host, the Anorak. Firstly, I wish to say that I hope that any American viewers out there have had a wonderful Memorial Day and have commemorated the good lives of many people who served, fought and risked their lives to protect and keep your country safe. Externally, at least. Well, anyways, on to our subject itself, today. In some way, it's kind of weird and even slightly amusing that a band's last album would be the first one of that band for me to review. But since this album has already turned 40 years old, I might as well celebrate that instead of Memorial Day because, well, as you might guess and tell, I'm not American. So let's let's not waste any more time and quickly jump into Roxy Music's 1982 album Avalon. The cover itself is really good. If you know Roxy Music, if not for their music, but for also for their risque Playboy magazine style album cover arts featuring extravagantly dressed models, almost always pushing the limits and boundary of what one could get away with when it comes to such. However, in this case, it's it's quite unique in a way. Eschewing the rather sexual nature of previous album covers in favour of something more enigmatic and mysterious, while still featuring an actual model. This one being Lucy Helmore, who at the time was engaged to the lead singer himself, Brian Ferry, wearing what seems to be a medieval style helmet while holding a falcon and looking outward to the watery horizon, reflecting the darkened sky ever so perfectly and clearly. Clearly and clearly evoking the legendary King Arthur and his last journey to the mystical and mythical island of Avalon itself. It's very beautifully done and it honestly feels like a still from an old fantasy epic film from that very from the very time this album would be made and released. And honestly, one wouldn't be able to tell it's a woman wearing that, let alone a model posing and wearing that medieval garb. Which I gotta commend them for alone. Great 80s album cover art. So, anyways, on to the music itself and see if it's indeed the last a perfect last hurrah for Roxy Music. We begin the album with More Than This, a very synthy soft rock song with a slightly melancholy mood to it, a bit reminiscent of the new wave and post-punk scenes of its time. On top of Brian's vocals and keyboards, we also have some guitars by Phil Manzanera and Neil Hubbard. All this reminded me a bit of something out of The Cure or Talk Talk. The lyrics themselves have something of a pretty profound and poignant message to them. The addressing and accepting of our limitations and circumstances in life. How sometimes the things we enjoy the most, be it physical or otherwise, like a loving relationship, they don't always last forever. How things may be fun for a while, but soon there's no knowing of what's completely to come or where we may go from there. There may be nothing more to this than what we have and what we got. At the same time, it encourages us to live in the moment and take value, absolute value, in such things. Another interesting and unique thing about this song is that even though this became a single, the lyrics and vocals pretty much end at about the last third of the song, letting the instruments really take over for about a minute and three quarters before it fades out. And this, I think, helps the song stand out in a unique way. It's even still less known and underrated. But regardless, it's still very a very good opener and it serves as a good beginner for this album. Next is The Space Between. Hmm. I wonder if this is the space between spaces where those Indiana Jones extra dimensional alien things came from. Hmm. Anyways, this carries on the mellow nature of the first track while having a bit of a more rocky and funky side to it. Almost like a precursor to David Bowie's Let's Dance 
song and album, which would be released about a year later. The lyrics here are even fewer and more scattered and simplistic, singing about how, because of a distance between two partners in a relationship, it doesn't feel right enough for them. So, obviously, they decide to close in that gap tonight. Which no doubt means they'd be having a little umagamma together if you, you know what I mean? Wink, wink. With the scattered nature of the vocals, we still get to enjoy the instrumentation itself, featuring not only some guitars, but also some nice saxophone bits from Andy McKay, as well as a groovy bass from session musician Neil Jason, who had worked with the likes of John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Mick Jagger, Pete Townshend, Billy Joel, just to name a few. This is another underrated song in my opinion, and I think it could work well as background music to an 80s action detective drama kind of film or TV series, like Magnum P.I. or Miami Vice. Then we have the title track, Avalon. Another single from this album, this features some very dreamy synths, guitars, and a bit of a saxophone again, as well as somewhat exotic and tropical sounding drums, almost like something Eric Serra would compose. Its reference to the legendary island of the same name does remind me a bit of how ELO has some of its songs named after similar fictional places, like El Dorado, Shangri-La, and Xanadu these utopias and paradises, and I think this song here kind of plays up to that as well. A place to dream and escape to. After all the stresses and hardships of life in reality, our singer feel tired after a long, energetic and hyperactive party, especially after it has finally ended, but he soon finds someone coming out of nowhere to take him away no doubt to this metaphorical Avalon, a peaceful realm where they can do the samba and bossa nova together. Which again, no doubt means they're having some sexy time. Like with the previous song. And like with the previous song, the lyrics here are also somewhat simple and scattered for the most of it. The backing ca female Kate Bush-esque vocals were performed by Yannick Etienne. I probably butchered that name wrong, as usual. A singer from Haiti who would make similar contributions to some of Brian's own solo albums, but she sadly passed away just a few months ago. Very tragic really, especially since from what I've from what few I've listened to from the stuff involving her, she seems to be, she seemed to be a very good and talented singer. Not even halfway through the album, and already this song alone feels like an ending slash farewell to the band alone. After that is India, a short instrumental track of about a minute and 45 seconds. With similar sounds and instrumentations as the last track, this does feel a little bit like an extension of that, even if it doesn't entirely sound remotely Indian. No sitars, no tempuras, no banjuris, or anything like that. At least some of the Beatle albums, Revolver and Sgt. Pepper, at least had some of those. But, as it is, it's still a very chill and soothing piece of music. A bit like something out of Mike Oldfield. Plus, as the music fades, we get this sweet and dancey bass and percussion beat that seem to transition us from one song to the next. Side 1 ends with While My Heart's Still Beating, an even more minimalistic musical piece similar to something like, say, P Phil Collins' If Leaving Me Is Easy or Dire Straits' Private Investigations. With its sparing uses of saxophone, piano, bass, drum machine, etc. Lyrically, it has a bit of a philosophical and even existential edge to it with Brian simply mentioning of all these people everywhere and just questioning where it's all leading to, even wondering if he's possibly dreaming and if so, he'd better be strong and stop dreaming. But he also realises that his heart's flown away now. His, 
Tart must have drank a bit of Red Bull, got wings, and escaped out of his body through his chest, a la the chestbuster from Alien. And for a very and for a very slow sounding and quiet sounding song, it does somehow go by quite quickly, as if the music itself is so good that we've somehow sunk into it, and only now hearing it reaches end comes as a bit of a surprise to us of sorts. Regardless, it's all it's still a very so very soothing and smooth song that one could very well unwind to while singing outside the garden having a bit of a nice drink, and just looking up at the setting sun as the stars come out. 